Hi guys, welcome back to Summer Equals IPL and we're here to preview the Gujarat Titans. Of course, GT ended up winning their first ever IPL season. Nobody really expected them to go on and win the IPL trophy, but Hardik Pandya and under his captaincy, this GT squad really came together. Miller really shown after quite a few IPL seasons and they ended up winning the IPL trophy. Um, Vansh, who were the standouts for you from, you know, a GT side that we didn't expect so much from? Yeah, uh, firstly, of course, the captain, Hardik Pandya, uh, he came clutch uh, even in terms of captaincy and his batting. I don't think he bowled a lot, but um, when whenever like he was called upon and he had to uh, take shoulder responsibility in terms of chasing down targets, uh, I think he did it like really well. So, Hardik Pandya, of course, Miller's form is uh, really important for Gujarat uh, going further into the tournament. And uh, again, Rashid Khan, we all know that he's one of the most important players in T20 cricket. So, I think Rashid Khan's form um, last year was, again, important. These three players' uh, impact uh, for them winning the title was important. Ali, what about you? Any standout performance? Of course, Shuman Gill performed really well. Ritman Saha had a, an unexpected season of sorts. Any standout performance for you from that GT side? I mean, yeah. I mean, when you look at a team, when when you win the IPL title, I feel like the entire eleven, you know, played well because they they were the champions last year. But when you talk about your standout performers, uh, as one said, Hardik Pandya, because that was the first time you know him captaining, taking responsibility of an entire new franchise, especially being a new franchise, not an old franchise, new fans, new team, new ownership. So he took it. He took the challenge really well. He went and won it in the main made in the season. And uh, again, like David Miller, it was almost like he literally carried the team and in the middle orders. He carried the team and they were almost looking like they were going to lose in certain chases and he scored a lot of runs where he carried them to victory. So Miller again was a surprise because uh, we saw him, he got dropped by Punjab and then he came here and he, he showed that he can actually carry a team and he ended up winning the IPL. So that was there. And again, Rashid Khan is also very important because he's become the World T20 number one bowler. Now you've seen over the years how important he is. Hyderabad didn't really want to lose him, but they unfortunately lost him. And you saw how Gujarat went up and Hyderabad went down as soon as they lost him. So yeah, these three generally they're top players. I mean, also Shami is pretty underrated in my opinion. Uh, he's gone against spearhead their bowling this year. Uh, his experience and him playing a lot of he's come back a bit in the t20 scene i mean really not that much but again i feel like he's the only he's the only baller that i expect to you know carry that team because when i look at the bowling lineup it's pretty young yeah fair enough um bunch let's quickly touch upon the three players who have to do well for you uh from a gt standpoint you know, for them to make the top four and eventually challenge for the IPL title, they've done this for other teams as well. Uh, who are the yeah. who are those three players for you from the GT side? Uh, firstly, I think Hardik Pandya, the captain, uh, he's going to come really uh, crucial for them. I think Hardik Pandya, the batsman, uh, has provided stability over the last the last year that they played. Um, he provided stability at number four. He goes back at number four. He hasn't played a lot of. Uh, cricket at number four recently. Even for India, um, he comes at five, six. I don't think he's batted a lot yeah. recently. So I think his form uh, in terms of just carrying, anchoring the innings is important. Uh, but one player that I think is really important is Williamson. I think mm -hmm. that's where they would probably uh, require some stability. They didn't have uh, uh, anyone who was like a solid number three last year. They started uh, Sai Sudarshan, but they dropped him. They played Wade at three. There was no stability over there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think Hardik Pandya, Miller and um, Williamson. Because Miller, I don't think they have a like-for-like -like replacement for him. Uh, Wade would yeah. come in at five if Miller, he's not there for the first game. So, I think Wade starts at five, but if um, Miller gets injured through the season or he's not available, then I don't think they have any proper replacement for him. So, I think these three players in the middle order are really important for the team. 
I actually see Wade coming and doing a job for Miller in case he does get injured. I think Wade is not a bad replacement for Miller at five. You know, um, anyways, Adi, uh, what about you? Who do you think are those three key players for Gujarat this season? I mean, for me, first, it has to be Gil. He's like been the man in everyone's mouth. Like everyone's talking about him. He's been in sublime form for India too. He's basically replaced KL Rahul, where KL Rahul has been displaced from, you know, the Indian team by Gil. And as soon as Gil took the opportunity, he's, he showed his talent where else. Uh, Kayla failed to show his talent during these times. So we can see that he's in full confidence right now. And I mean, he scored a century against New Zealand in their home ground, which is going to be the Narendra Modi Stadium itself. So that shows that he is capable. He can play the T20. I mean, I, he there were two series which he played this, season, this year in the T20s, which was Sri Lanka and New Zealand. I mean, apart from the century, he didn't show much in the T20s. <clears throat> So I expect him to show and prove himself and that he can play all three formats well. So I expect him to, you know, perform this IPL a bit more than what he's done previously because he's coming to the stardom and that reliant player. Uh, second has to be Pandya again because we've seen how important he's become. Not only for GT, but even for the Indian squad because he's become... He's virtually become the vice <coughs> captain now. Uh, when Rohit Sharma missed those games against Australia, he was the one captaining. And when he did captain, India actually won those games. So, the only game in the ODI. So, you can see that his captaincy, especially not only in the GT, but it's also translated to the Indian team where, like, it shows that he can go there and win the games in the internationals also. Mm-hmm. So, you can see his experience and how good he's been as a captain itself, which is always immense for a franchise. And lastly, I, I again believe uh, Rashid Khan is always going to be there because he's He's not only the baller, but he can also bat. In certain situations, he can be that X factor where, like, if you're down the trenches, he can just come out and score <laughs> stunts out of nowhere. I expect that he can do that again. And especially in Ahmedabad, I feel like his strengths are going to show more because, as we've seen previously, that track just seems like it suits the spinners. We've seen that in the test, we've seen that even in the ODIs. So I expect Rashid Khan to help, help the stadium will help to his strengths. Yeah. And, to be able to showcase his talents even more. I actually completely agree with Adi uh, in terms of two of his picks. Uh, Gil looks like he's in sublime form. He's been brilliant across white ball cricket formats for India. He's he's really the guy who is in red hot form right now. I think Gil will have one of those incredible IPL seasons, probably 600 plus runs. Um, same for Rashid Khan. I think he's very important to this Gujarat line bowling lineup. He's going to be their main man. They don't have... Uh, they obviously have Shami in there. But apart from Shami, he's the guy who is experienced. He's the guy who is going to lead the bowling attack. And uh, finally, I'll wrap it up with Kane Williamson. I think it's a very, very smart buy that GT made. He, they didn't have a number three. They struggled a little with that role. They had good starts from Gil and Saha, but really did not have a solid number three. And now they've got that William in Williamson. And uh, he's going to be crucial to GT success across the 14 games. Oh, sorry, 18 games in this IPL season. Um, okay, let's quickly uh, move on to discussing your pick for GT in terms of the auction. Uh, Vansh, who do you think was GT standout by in the auction? Uh, for me, I think it, it's again Williamson. For me, the number three is probably something that they had looked to uh, fill that hole. Gill plays a very different role. I feel this year he plays a really different role than what he played last year. He was anchoring the innings last year. He had to, uh, you know, carry his. He had to carry on and um, make sure that he doesn't lose his wicket because you had uh, the explosive batsmen of Pandya Miller. Tevatia, but to provide stability, you needed Gill. But I feel this year they have yeah. Williamson in the number three position. So Gill faces a challenge of providing a good start. Not only a good start, but uh, if he continues, then he has to continue. He has to maintain a good strike rate in terms of uh, scoring because the stability is now the onus is on Williamson. So he's going to probably provide you the stability because in terms of attacking abilities, I think Gil has more of, uh, you know, uh, like shots across the field in terms of um, scoring runs. Yeah. 
so gil has to probably take a more attacking approach and for that reason i feel williamson's role is more important and probably one of the best buys this ipl in terms of uh, strategic hole, f- filling the holes in the teams ali what about you who was your pick in the auction for gt i mean it would have been williamson for me also i guess we all agree that williamson at number 3 always of yeah, stability yeah, yeah. and also of his leadership in a sense cuz he's been a very successful captain in all three formats <laughs> Uh, he's not captaining anymore in for New Zealand, but we've seen his leadership. He's ca- he took them to the semi-finals and finals in the World Cup so for New Zealand. So, yeah, he's like we know how good he is as a leader. But again, if I have to go apart from Williamson, I think KS Bharat can prove as an X factor good buy because again, as we spoke in that India's almost lacking a wicket-keeping spot, and if he really wants to, you know, put his foot on the keeping spot in all three formats. This will be his time for him to prove. I mean, let's see if he can or not. Uh, KS Bharat was a pretty smart buy because, as we know, Sah is pretty old now. He doesn't play regularly for, you know, India or in those top formats. I mean, generally, even though he was pretty surprising uh, last year for Gujarat and came opening and he played very well, carried them, played along with Gil very well. It was surprising. I just don't think it's going to happen the same way this year because. This year, there's going to be different grounds, different different conditions to face. I just don't think it's going to be he's going to be able to cope up with it. So I expect PS Bharat to come in and replace him, and hopefully he can show us what to. Yeah, um, for me it's Williamson as well. Uh, Williamson is not only my pick for GT's auction buys; it's my pick or like across all teams as well. I think it's a very very smart buy to pick him up at base price is something uh, most teams would be would have been hoping for a buy like that and he really fits into this GT team real like pretty well. Um, moving on, guys, let's quickly touch upon the probable elevens. I think we're all in consensus about the four foreigners pretty much. We've got Williamson, Miller, and Rashid locked in. The only contentious picks are between Joseph Alzari, Joseph, and uh, Josh Little, so Adi has gone for Little. Once you've gone for Joseph, and I've gone for Joseph, but I don't have an issue with Little coming in either. For me, either of the two work. What about you? Are you saying you have to play Joseph? Uh, yeah. Uh, so Joseph has had uh, experience in the IPL. He's played the IPL for the past two three years, and uh, in the bowling lineup, I feel they already have. Some in in experience in terms of uh, probably I think Yash Dayal starts or even Shiv, if Shivam Mavi starts, um, he's been in the circuit for a while, but uh, he's also gone for runs. He has he's not stabilized his position in any team um, since he's made his debut in the IPL. So I think um, to provide just the experience is really important. There has to be some uh, lead leadership in that bowling group rashid khan provider in the spin department in the pace department i think Al- alzari joseph and shami have a role to play um josh little um of course we all want to see uh, him play i don't think he would start but based on alzari joseph's performance uh, i think josh uh, josh little might get an opp- opportunity in the probably the later mm-hmm. half of the tournament but gujarat titan usually um, like if you see the lineup right now, I don't think they have anyone like a Jofra Archer, Mark Wood, Hazelwood type of uh, player who would uh, like a foreign fast bowler. There's just that hole that's probably left, and I think Alzari Joseph is the best option they have right now. And Little maybe comes back into the tournament yeah. later. And I think uh, the picks in terms of our middle orders. Pretty much the same. We've all gone for Williamson, Pandya, Miller, Tevatia. Uh, Adi and I have gone for Abhinav <clears throat> Manohar as that finisher um, at seven. And once you've gone for Sai Kishore, who also provides a bit of left arm spin, um, any particular reason for that? I think that they have Gil. Of course, they open with Gil and Bharat for me. They have Williamson at three, Pandya at four, Miller at five, and Tevatia at six. And they used Rashid to finish off certain games last year at seven, and we've seen we saw him finish games. They needed, I think, sixteen yeah. of three, twelve of two, and he he finished it. So 
I think the Gujarat Titans setup really look. Uh, they look forward to his batting. I think they really believe in his batting abilities. They want him to finish uh, games off for Gujarat, and we saw that recently last year. They like they believe that he can uh, provide that uh, power hitting ability. So Rashid at seven is not a bad option at all. Kishore okay. at eight, and then if Kishore comes in at eight, then you know that you have your batting till eight because then there's Joseph, Shami, and Dayal who don't. But uh, that much, Kishore has batted a bit for Tamil Nadu. So at eight, I I wouldn't mind him just coming at eight, uh, playing that tail enders role. I don't think Manohar is utilized well. Uh, if he comes after Tevati, I don't think he's uh, playing before. There's always a lot of flexibility we saw last year, but I think Tevati comes right after Miller, and um, then it's just power hitting abilities. Like you don't want uh, Manohar to just play like. Five six balls at number seven because he doesn't give you a lot of options with in terms of bowling too. Uh, Kishore mm-hmm. gives you four overs, and in Ahmedabad you know that it might turn. We've seen the test games again, like Adi said, uh, it turns. It turns when um, when the pitch is made that way. So there are options uh, in the bowling department for the spinners. You play Rashid Khan. Tevatia won't bowl all four. You would expect him to bowl one, two, and so the other spinning option would be Sai Kishore. Um, another change that you've got, which Adi and I don't, is the inclusion of Yash Dayal. Uh, Adi and I have gone for the more experienced and an international today, Shiva Mavi. But you've gone for Yash Dayal. Why? So, I think all the teams require a certain. Um, combination. They want a left-arm uh, fast bowler. Yash Dayal provided that last year with uh, great like composure. I think he was fantastic in the power play. He provided a lot of wickets for uh, Gujarat Titans last year, especially in the power play. I don't, he finished off. He didn't bowl a lot in the death. They used him majorly in the start. They had Lockie Ferguson. I think he's going to be a big miss this year. But Yash Dayal just provides you with that swing yeah. and that pace in uh, the power play. And it's just that I think left-arm pacers are really important for all IPL teams in terms of uh, just the options and variety that you possess. And then watch, I just want to ask you one last question. Would you yeah. go for Shiva Mavi, Mavi if Josh Little breaks into the side over Alzari Joseph? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if if Alzari Joseph is dropped for little, then you already have your left arm pacer. Um, I exactly. would then have a little more experience of Shivam Mavi over Yash Dayal, who is relatively new to the IPL setup. Adi, uh, both of us have not gone for Sai Kishore, who is the left arm orthodox option. We've gone for a little more pace friendly attack. Um, but we still have spinners in Tevatia and Rashid. Do you think they're good enough to complete eight overs of spin? Uh, yes, I do think so. But when one brought up the point that Kishore can give something off the bat and the ball with four overs, that does make sense. But I feel like it's going to be a combination where, like, when they're playing in Ahmedabad, maybe Kishore comes in. But then when they're going traveling towards the, you know, the much better batting places like, you know, Eden Garden, Shinaswami, I feel like Kishore's going to yeah, step out. Yeah. And maybe yeah. Abhinav is going to come in, especially in Bangalore, I think. So, him being a Karnataka boy, he's played a lot of games here. Yeah. So, yeah. I would expect them to keep shifting from home and away side. So, that's that's what I think will happen. And I do believe, as one said, uh, having a left-arm pace fast bowler is really important. It's pretty unique. And I that's just the reason I feel like Gujarat went and spent their 4.4 crores on Little. And when you look at their foreign options, apart from Williamson, Miller, and Rashid, their fourth foreign is not really set in that terms. Yeah, coming yeah. In, sometimes they might play Wade, but I don't think he's going to play much with KS Bharat coming in. So I do think Little's going to come in the squad, especially when you see again that Mavi's come in for again about six throws also. So I I expect Mavi and Little to be the main paces with Shami. But yeah, as as I said, like when 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 they're traveling around, I feel like they're gonna have a bit of changes one or two in the middle order, especially with Kishore and Abhinav. Oh, fair enough. Um, I think that's pretty much it, guys. We've we're almost in sync and in uh, rhythm about the 
11 for Gujarat Titans. Just a few changes here and there. We'll see how the Gujarat Titans, the current champions, fare in the 2023 IPL season. Thanks so much. Let's uh, let's hope we have a good season for Gujarat and we join us in for the next preview.